These are flying different. These motherfuckers. It's supposed to be seven hour drive today. This guy's coming to investigate me. That sand is very deep. It's been destroyed by the elephant. The interesting thing is there is no road here. I think uh, we're going to be pushing it getting to Barbe. Good morning. We're heading out of Piper 2 quite nice and early in the hopes that we hear or see some of the lion that were roaring last night. We heard them about two or three times in the night. At one point it was quite close. So Chris and them are also going down to the um, borehole to see what's, what the lay of the land is. They can't actually do any work if there are animals around, which is quite interesting. And in particular, they can't work in the dark uh, because uh, something could come from behind. So we're heading out uh, to go and check the water hole looks like. Hopefully we'll catch some lion there. This is a good example of how bumpy the roads are in the CKGR in the south. If you look ahead, you can see you can actually see the undulations in the road that we have to see there. Look there, all the like bumps, basically driving over speed bumps 24/7. Ben and Tina are hard at work trying to find the pipe so they can fix it. The sun hasn't even risen and they're already at work. There's the water hole over there. And I'm gonna go take a little drive and see if we can see anything. The lion were definitely here last night. There the footprints. And there again, lovely. Copies of there. So while the boys are digging, Chris and Trevor have gone to just secure the perimeter, ensure there are no lions around. So did you find any? I suppose that's a good thing. <laughs> then it means they're not coming to you.
But yeah, you see the boys are still at work. Hard. Cheers. It's supposed to be a seven hour drive today, so I need to get going. They were wanting me to wait and see where the water comes out. So he said he would send me a video of when the water came out. And they must please tell the ladies at Gate that they are busy with the installation and the fixing. So yeah, on to Kare. Thought I'd come say goodbye to Tino as well. He's currently with the Landy connecting the inverter to the solar power to get home to the pump to get the pump going because the solar hasn't kicked in just yet. Did you see a line? No, sir. never saw a line. So the pump is down there in the yeah, it's down. down down. So now you're connecting it manually because the solar's not working yet. Because yeah. There's not enough sun. No, I just don't need it. What an awesome night last night with Chris and the guys. Listening to their stories of putting in boreholes and things like that in the um, CKGR and they've done one or two elsewhere. Uh, the one borehole they came to, I think it's in Miremi area, that they were fixing. They had to get in the water because the hippos were starting to, the water was drying up and the hippo were just in mud but a hippo had died in the one pool and they had to still, still drag the dead body out, dig a hole and bury it. I like said to them, that's like not in the job description. I mean, how do you even quote for something like that? Well, they don't quote because they do it as volunteer work. So, uh, but still, you know, how do you budget time-wise and things like that for that? Um, yeah, just fascinating stuff. So he was telling me there are something like um, there's something like one borehole every 70 kilometers uh, in the CKGR on average. Some of them are extremely remote, and no tourists or anything even go to them. But they're still running on solar 24/7. All these boreholes are monitored via satellite remote monitoring uh, they each connected up so he can he gets a message the the system gets a message every three hours or so and basically from that he can tell uh, or what what's happening with all the boreholes around the CKGR um, whether they're flowing or whether they're not flowing and then from that they can figure out if there's a problem like this one sort of sl slowed down its uh, output and they discovered that it uh, was a problem, so they came down. Drove from Flippin' Mound all the way to Piper Pan in one day to fix a borehole and drive back the next day. That is some serious driving. Kitty fells crossing the road. But as I said, these guys have got some serious stories uh, from working on boreholes in uh, nature reserves such as the CKGR. So as we drive, we drive over dune sections and then into flats. So these are what are known as deflation pans. So the wind picks up and it whisks the, 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 the sand out of the pan area and then creates a dune further on. And then these eventually fill up with water uh, and that's what creates the pans and so you'll see it's much harder clay surface sorry which means that you get proper dongas like this with in the wet season people struggle to get through and then oh there goes a buck yeah and then the rest is a sand dune which is all that bumpy road Oh my god, my god. Oh, I need to get these powder dust sections too. Look at this donga. Yo! Whoa, eh, man. This is bad. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 
See here we're exiting the flat pan and heading back into the dunes. See the colour of the sand change. It gets a bit uh, more cream coloured as opposed to the white salt flats of the see now see we're getting to be grey. So those were wildlife officers, they're actually heading out to check on Chris and, how, and his team, how they're doing with the borehole pump. Interestingly, um, specifically asked me not to take video of our conversation of them. I'm sure they have their reasons, and we shall respect it. You can see the party gate. So we're about a kilometre away from it. And then we're going to do some reassessing. I've got to check my fuel, whether I need to put fuel in. Uh, and then uh, I'm also quite keen. Woo, did you see that? That dude just flew right into the bonnet. Wow, that was quite scary. Quite keen to see some elephant here if they are. Quite a different environment. Nice long grass. Huh? Seems there is no one at Pale Gate. That is weird. Something has been leaking out of my vent. Very odd. So we just chatted with the rangers, the ranger lady here. And apparently the water hole is 4Ks through the gate on the other side of the gate. So we're going to go and check out the water hole. I believe I have found the Kade water hole. Wow, there's a lot of elephant here. And a lot of birds. One kudu running away. Yo, the birds look like a swarm. That dude's just doing a massive pee. This guy's coming to investigate me. I think I should move.
was great to see the Ellies drinking their water, fighting over the little water fountain. Um, I'm going to go back to Kade now. Um, the ranger has very kindly offered for me to have a shower there. They've got hot showers, which is a welcome after a couple of days of uh, simply showering with the troopy shower. Uh, having cold showers, very quick showers because you've got to do that and um, it sort of ties in nicely because I'm going to I'm going to refuel the car with the three jerry cans that I got so if I get diesel all over me yeah, it doesn't really matter but I think what I'm going to do is change into some old clothes because the ones I'm wearing I can still wear and then uh, refuel the car then it's a three hour drive to Kaka. So I'm hoping to get going by midday if we're lucky. And then we'll get there around three. Very definitely lion prints on this road just outside the gate as well. Right, so we're going to fill up with the three jerry cans that I've got. I've had to carry them in the car putting them on the roof conversion would mean I would never be able to lift them and I don't have a tailgate to attach them to so in the car they were double bagged in black plastic and they've been absolutely fine here's my 15 Rand 10 puller funnel I bought because I think I've lost mine or left it at home with some of the trippy other alright let's get to filling This final hits the diesel go in. Pretty efficient. All fueled up next to the ablution block and tire pressures checked. 1.8 front, 2 bar at the back. For some reason, Indiflat says it's uh, 1.8, but anyway. Right, now to show you the bathrooms at Made. Gate. Actually quite nice. Toilets, towel, clean, basin, even hand wash soap, shower, inside the shower. Very nice. So pretty handy to have the fire gate for refuel, because now I've done the refuel and now I can shower, get nice and clean. Get that diesel smell off me, although that's going to take a while, I think. Anyway, I'll see you back out. Oh, this is absolute heaven after not having had water for a number of days. Enjoy this one. How's that for looking snazzy? Even managed to shave. Yeah, pretty cool. The joys of wandering through the bush to go and find the people at the staff camp. At any moment, you could come across an elephant. You never know. Check their pathways. So, fun fact Kaare has uh, Wi Fi on the campsite and at the office. So, I'm just taking advantage of it for a bit. While well, I munch on my tuna salmi. There you go, boys. You're now officially at Kaare Gate. So, Kaare done. Heading out to Kaka. And um, it is now. 10 past 1 in the afternoon it's telling me I'll get there at 10 past 3 which is 2 hours away to do 65 kilometers sound about right? I'm guessing it is coming out of Kade that sand is very deep and uh, there was a bush pushed over by elephants I couldn't stop 
I had to just plow through the bush. So I'm just hoping my tires are fine after that. Seems to have got a little bit better, but I don't want to talk too soon. So that section there, I was the car was struggling in in high range second. Very very soft deep sand. All right, let's give you an idea of what this tastes like. Forgive me if the camera goes skew. Chris did tell me about this, how the elephant push over these signs. Obviously rubbing themselves up against it or something. There's the sign over there. There's the turn off sign. It's twisting and turning and going backwards and forwards. I feel like a, you know, like a school kid or a child plays cards. And always does this. And I'm flipping doing that the whole time. It's like subway surfing. You've got to try and pick the line, but the, you've got to turn before the turn is needed. It's just a, a learning curve every step of the way. The sand is a bit like this here goes a third of your third of a second. Um, the sand is, is a bit like soft sand that gets hot in the midday sun and is so viscous it's not funny. It's um, a challenge to make sure that you don't get onto the middle of Maniki, the, the, the island, and slow down radically. So yeah, we've got to make sure we swing around that tree and keep in the tracks. Occasionally the car spins out of a bit of control and you kind of find yourself like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to keep it straight and narrow. But I keep telling myself I have to have faith in this car. This car is one of the cars that's driven all over Africa and it has the plan the power to do it. If any car has it, this car should. So, have a little faith in the car, have a little faith in the tyres that are rabbit extreme, flat terrains, but they should survive and get us through. One thing I am constantly doing in the track is looking out for um, branches and in particular a barney tree branches. If those things catch the tyre they can slice it quite wide open and I don't need to be changing a tire in this heat touch wood hope I never need to um, so hopefully my sidewalls will hold up if I do but yeah you driving you've got to just make sure that you are vigilant on the road so here we have the turning to Parker Bape Road looks rather overgrown. It's going to be interesting. So now apparently I must look. There are two roads. One is for cars and one is for trucks. Get up the hill. Yeah, 
other end of the stadium. I don't know where I'm going to. I assume it's the campsite. Okay. <laughs> what was the campsite? is now an X campsite. It has been destroyed by the elephants. So this used to be the campsite. It's been destroyed by the elephant. They've literally taken the trees down. You can see the Ellies are down at the watering hole. go down and see them. This really isn't much of a campsite, I must say. With all the stuff that's thrown down here from the elephants. And the real concern is that since the last tracks of a car here, there are just hundreds of elephant footprints. So I really don't want to be camping on an elephant path back into the bush. It seems they come through here. So... I'm going to go down there to see what the lay of the land there is. an old campsite down there. And then there's also a water pump station. Maybe I'll try that. The joys of arriving at camp in Africa. And the elephants have decided it's theirs. You can't have it. So with the original campsite not working, I'm looking for the old campsite and discover that the old campsite is under a tree filled with vultures. Not far off is the herd of elephant at the waterhole. I want to go past the waterhole to the solar installation, but besides having to get past the herd of elephants, there doesn't appear to be an actual road on the other side of the waterhole. Anyway, let's get back to going to see the elephant at the waterhole. Don't be scared, boys. Straight past the waterhole. I don't know where the road on the other side. 
other side is. I think it's right there where the elephants are and I don't really want to go near them. So I'm going to try and go up next to this tree here where the vultures are and see what happens here. So I've um, found a spot I think I'll camp at which is next to the solar installation. That other camp has just got too many elephant footprints. I really don't feel like stressing tonight with the elephants are going to wander through and get upset with me. Having been with the guys doing the pumps, Chris, I feel uh, confident that camping next to this will be okay. I can see that they've been here and made fire, so I'm just going to do a very basic security fire. I don't think I'm going to make any radical food tonight. Um, yeah, I think just maybe wraps with cheese and salami are probably the easiest thing to do. Um, and then get going super early tomorrow. Still umming and eyeing about whether to go to to do the large loop around past the Bushman communities. Yes, Bushman, they prefer to be called Bushman in the CKGR. Yeah, otherwise just relaxing here. It's pretty hot. Um, so the easiest is just to point the nose of the troopy into the sun, let the solar gather all the electricity it needs for the night and um, open it up so that we get as much ventilation and uh, just chill until sunset, maybe go and have a look at the waterhole again quickly and then uh, hit the hay. So the Ellies have left, there's nothing much happening at that waterhole except for a couple of vultures. So it's kind of an eerie place, uh, Kaka, not a great place uh, to spend the night. So I'm going to do my damnedest to push on to Bape tonight and see how that works. I hope I make it before it's dark. Alright, good luck to me. Hope to see you on the other side. I think uh, we're going to be pushing it getting to Bape. But uh, hopefully we don't have to do too much night driving at all. But it would be nice to get there today. Maybe I should explain why I left. When I set up camp next to the solar station, I started to feel nervous lying there with two meter tall grass all around me. It would be really difficult to spot a lion coming, whether it was in the morning or in the night. In dark we find camp. Being 450 kilometers away from any civilization and an approximate six hour drive, I felt like being solar here meant I needed to move on. So here we are flying along into the dark to find Barpe camp. This dude needed some shoes, so I've given him my Crocs. We made it last night. Even broke a mirror on the way. Damage to KGR. Barbie Road can do to you. Whole section of could see here, but 